Hi, I'm Ed Gerstenfeld from UCSF. We're here at the Heart Rhythm Meeting, and I'm with uh, Dr. Jeff Healy, Professor of Medicine at McMaster University. Thanks for joining us today, Jeff. Thanks, Ed. So we're here to discuss his paper, which is part of the Late Breakers at Heart Rhythm and simultaneous publication in Jack, titled Apixaban versus Aspirin According to Chad's Vast Score in Subclinical Atrial Fibrillation, Insights from Artesia. So this is a very... Uh, Exciting paper, it's a sub-study of the main Artesia paper, which to remind the viewing audience was a prospective randomized study comparing apixaban and aspirin in patients with subclinical AF, so asymptomatic, brief, device-detected AF, that found that apixaban did in fact reduce stroke and systemic embolism by a total of about 0.5%, but also with about a 0.75% absolute increase in bleeding. Um, so with this latest sub-study, Jeff, what what did your investigators and what did you decide to uh, look at? Well, sure. I mean, this is a common problem, right? It's yeah, subclinical atrial fibrillation is present in about one in three of our patients with pacemakers and ICDs. The main results of artesia, you know, showed you could prevent stroke, but at a cost of bleeding. So the natural uh, tendency is to look for who benefits the most and who suffers the least harm. Uh, Chad's VASC is something we've used for a decade or more to stratify risk in patients with clinical atrial fibrillation, so this is why it made sense. The trial was enriched, so we did require stroke risk factors in addition to the subclinical atrial fibrillation to get in. So most patients had, you know, the median Chad's VASC score was four. And so we simply looked at patients whose score was less than four, equal to four, and greater than four. And that, that's the, the crux of the analysis. And was that pre-specified to Yeah, we had, we had pre-specified uh, one of the keys was to look at greater than four versus less than or equal to. As it turns out, we had a lot of uh, power, so we were able to break it up with additional granularity. And what did you find? Yeah, the main findings were actually quite interesting. And if you jump right to the conclusions, uh, for those whose Chad's VAS score was less than four, there was very little to be gained in terms of stroke reduction, and they did suffer excess in major bleeding. Uh, when the risk, uh, Chad's VASC uh, risk score was equal to four, uh, over three and a half years, the mean trial duration, uh, there was about a 2.25% absolute reduction in stroke with very little excess bleeding. Uh, number needed to treat over that time period was 44. And uh, so for those patients, we feel it's worth considering treatment. In the greater than four, which was almost 30% uh, of the trial participants, uh, there was a clear benefit for anticoagulation. Over the trial duration, about a 4% reduction in stroke. Uh, NNT was uh, 24, 25, and, and this was you know, highly significant. And we did see when we looked at those absolute benefits using uh, statistical modeling, there was a, a clear interaction there. So as you went up the Chad's VAS risk profile, the benefits got greater. Yeah, it's such a common clinical problem. So I really thank you and, and your co-authors for finally answering this question. If you have one sort of highlight message for the audience, what do you think that is? Yeah, so you, you, for now, use the Chad's VAS score. Uh, we will look at other uh, methods over the future. Uh, but remember in the patients who you do not treat based on this to continue to follow uh, because they do have a, a fairly significant rate of progression to clinical atrial fibrillation over time. Great. And you feel clinically, so patients with a CHADS vest greater than four, even subclinical AF? Treat them. Treat them with a pixaban. Fantastic. Thank you very Thanks. much.